All right. Welcome back to the podcast. As always, we bring the best of the best guests. And as I tell you guys, one of my favorite parts about this profession is the fact that even though I'm hosting these podcasts, hosting these masterminds, writing books and stuff, the ability to learn how to learn remembers the greatest ability one can have. And I know I'll beat a dead horse and say that over and over again. But for me, it's a great honor as I interview these guests. I'm always constantly taking notes and then I actually organize and structure my notes because I'm always learning from them. So we've got another legend on this podcast, Jefferson Santos. And I want you to get to know him real quick before we get into our topic, which is a unique topic in the sense that most of the time, I don't, we've only talked about leadership a few times on this podcast. I know I wrote a whole book, your rank advancement blueprint on it, but it's not a topic that most leaders come on and and are, want to talk about for whatever reason, even though we know that everything rises and falls in leadership and how important it is. So I'm excited to dive into that. So Jefferson, we're going to do a rapid fire here, my man. I know you're out there in, in Dallas, Texas, one of the hubs for network marketing. How long have you been in the profession? 26 years. Oh Isn't that crazy? 10 years old? <laughs> I know. That's from when I was 20, man. Yeah, it's crazy. My mother told me about it, invited me to some doctor's house. They started drawing circles. I'm like, this looks like football. So like, I fell in love with it right off the bat. That's crazy. So how many, maybe you know exacts or estimates, how many countries have you traveled to? Traveled to probably, uh, definitely about 40, let's say 45, could be 46 give or take a country. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. I, I tried to figure it out the other day and I think it was like 25, 26, but then the other day I'm like, Oh, what? I forgot about that country. That is a country. Yeah. Is- I mean, what's crazy is like everybody, guess what? Everybody's about the same meaning. Like they want to have fun. They want to have yeah. freedom. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and, and they all have their certain desserts and their certain, you know, uh, dishes and stuff. And it's awesome. That's what I love tasting the food, man. It's awesome. So cool. Uh, if you were to guess how many countries you built your business in. Well, that's over fi- that's over 50. Yeah. And, and, you know, it, it wasn't me. I mean, yeah, well, it, of course. It, you know, you, you don't go there, you grow there. Right. And that's what happens. It's like you build your backyard and all of a sudden it takes you around the world. And yeah. So, so yeah, over 50 countries. Which is mind blowing. If you think back to before you started network marketing, if someone would have said someday you're going to build an organization that's in 50 plus countries, but like Jefferson just said, it's not as complex as one may think. People make it way, way too complicated, uh, which is always a success principle in this business, right? Of mm-hmm. going back to those basics and doing those basics better and better and better. I actually just did that recently. I just went back and looked at, you know, my whole business model and everything I do, what got me to where I'm at. And I said, you know what? I need to go back to a lot of those things. And one of those things is uh, I did, I would do two to three interviews a week. And I slowed down really the last year. And so the last you know two months, I'm speeding back up and going back to the basics. So I want to talk a little bit about leadership. And, and I know right now, you know, part of leadership is, is people are going through transitions, whether it's companies and network marketing, whether it's jobs, whether it's life, whether it's, you know, anything and everything. We know the one thing that's constant and inevitable is change. And we know that leaders understand this and they know how to deal with change because there's going to be things that are thrown your way. We wouldn't have known, you know, with the chaos in the world that shut the whole world down. No one could have predicted or even imagined that like that wasn't even possible. So what's uh tell us a little bit what you feel like your definition of, of leadership is and, you know, how one can become a better leader. Yeah, for sure. Um, and first of all, thanks for having me too. This is this is exciting. And and uh, you know, obviously, you know, John C. Maxwell says leadership is influence, nothing more, nothing less. You know, leadership is also obviously leading yourself. Is knowing that um, you know you're not the you're not the only one that's going through what you're going through. There's other people going through it. And so, just by you making a move and, and making the step, you're inspiring other people to make that step, right? And getting people to do something that benefits them. They wouldn't normally do by themselves, but by you doing it, 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 you're the spark that, that, or the domino that, that knocks everything over in a good way. Right. And that's how I see what leadership is. And, and like you were talking about, like, you know, when we were talking earlier, transition is, is huge. And we all, we're all going through it, whether we're transitioning to uh, another company career, to the next rank, to the new level of ourselves, to the new new level of our skill that we need to, to, to be at to get to be, become whatever rank you want to be. It's all these different things. And, 
And so it's interesting. And, and I'll share this quick story. Uh, I, I went to, I got accepted to the U S Naval Academy, which is in Annapolis, Maryland. And so I'm in high school playing football. And, um, and I asked my dad, actually junior high asked my dad, what do I got to do to fly airplanes? He's like, well, you got to get straight A's. I'm like, okay, how do like, okay. Okay. Then what he goes, well, you got to go to the air force Academy. And I'm like, okay. And that was the only Academy I knew about. Cause that's what he talked about. So, you know, get straight A's fly airplanes. Like that was the first goal. And then I heard learned about the Naval Academy, West Point, all of that. And so my point is this, is I, I, I started getting straight A's. It was my first main goal, right? Then, and then I got accepted to the U.S. Naval Academy. Now I go from living at home my entire life to living 2,000 miles away. I go from playing, you know, high school, Texas, what, 5A, whatever, football, to now playing Division 1A, college smash mouth football. Yeah. To going to civilian life to now military life. So three major transitions right there. And it was funny because this morning I was at the gym and there, there was a guy there that he, he used to be a Naval officer and he had like an old school Naval Academy, like t-shirt regulation gear. I'm like, oh, that brings crazy memories. He's like, yeah, bad memories. And I'm like, how much bullshit can you deal with? Yeah. And it's like, I, he goes, I can deal with four years of anything. And I'm like, that may, I mean, it, it's kind of like you kind of, that, that kind of tests you as a leader and your character too, is how much bullshit can you deal with? you know, to get where you need to go. And I'm not saying it's all bad, but it's like, how, do, how are you dealing with the stuff you really don't want to deal with to get where you want to go? And that's, that's going to make you into the person that, that you need to, to be. That, that's the grit. That's the tough skin. That's all that stuff, the, the butterfly and the crystal, I mean, the, the caterpillar, the chrysalis and the butterfly thing. Right. And so, you know, we, we want transition. Yeah. You and know, I think real to- quick on that, I, I'm thinking back to Darren Hardy's book, The Entrepreneurial Roller Coaster, right? And he talked about how something like 95% of the things that entrepreneurs do, they don't necessarily like doing them. And I think that was like, for me, when I read that years and years ago, that was like, ah, oh, because everyone's like, do what you're passionate about, right? And it's not like in network marketing, you get so excited to invite someone, you get rejected and you're like, oh, that was so amazing. I feel so good. I'm so glad they just made fun of me and told me it's the stupidest thing I've ever done. Right. But like you're talking about, you know, it's not all bad. Of course it's good. Of course it's like purpose. It's, you know, having the vision of how important it is and you're getting closer to it. But I'm glad you said that because I think a lot of times people get in and they're like, do what you say you love. Well, you love the outcome, but that doesn't mean you always love every part of the process. Right. Yeah, I mean, exactly. It's kind of like, you know, back back to the analogy of sports. It's like we you, you do two a days, like in football, two a day practices, all these practices, all this stuff, lifting weights to have, you know, to play for 60 minutes on Saturday, right? And and it's great, but guess what? You might not even get on the field and actually play. And and that's and that's and that's with in the business. I mean, you're, you know, for me, it took me, I sponsored three people in my first two years. Like I sucked. You know, and the thing is, is something's got to suck. Like it's not going to be perfect. And here's the thing. If for some reason you're listening to this and you, you're all of a sudden your group exploded in the beginning, uh, you're also, so you're also going to hit a plateau. There's always going to be something. And you're going to be like, well, how do, how do I recreate that? I don't even know how I did it. Well, that's a blessing too. And you're going to learn some new things out of that. And so for me, I was, I was the other, I was like the slow crock pot. Like finally it took me almost nine years to have any success. So there's advantages to both you know? So, yeah, I look at that and it's, it's funny because people always, they create their stories and their own version of their own stories in the sense of like, well, I'm extroverted, so I can't do this business because everyone says, you know, of course you can do it because you're extroverted or I'm introverted. So I can't do this because I don't really like talking to people. And so they take their own stories and they put a negative spin on it instead of there's the complete opposite side of it, right? For you, how empowering is it now that you can tell people that, it took you nine years to learn how to do it. And then, of course, you tell them, but let me show you how you can shave off years of your life and how to do this business and how to transition, right, to do it quicker. So I look at leadership and I talk a little bit about this in your rank advanced with Blueprint House. Everyone starts out as followers. It's the learner phase. Then they transition into leaders of followers, which is like the lifestyle phase. And then they become leaders of leaders, right, where it's the legacy phase where you and I both know you find things that are you love network marketing. We find things that are even bigger purpose than network marketing, right? So for you, you and your business, 
when someone is transitioning, let's say from, you know, most people I feel like are in the learner phase or lifestyle phase, and they want to transition from the learner phase to lifestyle, meaning, you know, go from a follower to maybe a leader of followers. What are some of the steps to help them stretch that comfort zone and get them to really step up and actually lead, right? Because yeah, you got to become a great follower, become a great leader, but now you want them to step up and actually lead and, and become maybe the face of their organization. Well, I, I think it's to know that you can do it. It's it's to know that if you can see it being done, then you can do it. And it's one of those things where, you know, I talk about this in my book, uh, Higher Life Design. I talk about, you know, the imposter syndrome. And well, we've heard that before too, right? It's like, oh, I don't know if I can do it. Like I, I see them doing it, but I feel weird doing it. Well, yeah, everything's going to feel a little weird. I mean, you know, you, you were semi-pro in tennis. I mean, you change your grip, you change the thing. It's going to feel weird in the beginning, but that doesn't mean you stop. That means you push through that. That means you skill up when you're, when you're either nervous or you're ha- you have that self-doubt voice in your head. It's like, just tell it to shut the F up, <laughs> you know, like just do the thing. Action's going to kill it. Right. And that's, that's what I did. I remember my very first like testimony, you know, success story when I got brought up in front of the room and I'm like, blah, 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 and like I, I don't know what I said. And I don't even, I, I probably try to squeeze, I don't know how much words into like five seconds, but it was the, it was the weirdest thing. I was sick to my stomach. I was sweating all the things. Right. But I did it. And it was because somebody said, Hey, I need you up here. I need you to share your story. And I was like, what am I gonna do? Say no. And, and that's when you get that call, answer the freaking call. You know, when somebody, when some, it's like when you're upline or your, your leader or whoever saying, Hey, step up, that's that. And that's for you to, to do that. You know, that they're the only way you can walk in somebody's footsteps. Somebody can walk in your footsteps is if you move your foot, right? Well, guess what? They're moving their foot for you to walk in their footsteps. And so if you don't ever step up, then you, it's kind of like, you're not giving your people permission to step up. Right. And so it's kind of like that domino thing. You're stepping up and doing the thing. And guess what? Whether you know this or not, your people want to see you up on stage yeah. sharing your story. And you might think your story is like, oh, it's my story. It's boring. It's, I'm sick and tired of saying it or whatever. It doesn't, it's not about you. It's about that your story is going to unlock and give somebody else permission to go live there to, to step up as well. And that's the thing that I had to get over is like, like, what am I like the whole, you know, self-worth thing, right? Well, what, why, why am I important? Why is my story important? Well, it's important to somebody out there that needs to hear your story. And so, so it's kind of like my good buddy, Brandon Bouchard said, you know, you need to get off your ass and go share your story. You know, that he challenged us. Uh, it was funny. I was at a seminar in 2012 with Brendan and he's like, you're talking about, you know, experts academy talking about writing a book. And I said, he goes, he goes, stop being a selfish bastard. Get out, get your story out to the world. And I'm like, he just slapped us upside the head. I'm like, that's what pushed me to go get my book out. That's what needs to, hopefully you're hearing this and you're listening right now. You're going, you need to share your story more. And by, it doesn't inspire anybody if you don't rank up. It doesn't inspire anybody when you don't go out there and share your story and get to your next level. And so everybody's waiting for you to go do something else, even though they're supposed to go step up themselves. They're looking to you as their leader. Yeah, one of the big topics that I love focusing on is people's negative association to attention. And I grew up with that negative association because I would hear it all the time from my dad, like you're just trying to get attention. And it's interesting because we look at the people that are most impactful, right? Whether it's Gandhi, Mother Teresa, it's Jesus Christ, if they wouldn't have gotten attention, they wouldn't have been able to change the world. And so, yeah, it's attention with the right intention is one of the biggest keys, but stop being so selfish where you feel like, hey, because you're worried, you know, about people misjudging you. Like I just did a, a post recently that, you know, showed how I was teaching my kids how to live. And I showed first class, like all of them were there. Well, they don't realize, you know, I teach my kids that, you know, the association of money is in an abundance where you can serve more, you can do more, you can create more memories. And those are the things that matter. Well, of course, people are triggered. And, you know, you got like tons of views, 300 plus thousand views of people that love it and they're commenting. And then the people that are triggered about money that don't even ask questions because they're projecting their own insecurities as they go. And I thought about this actually today. I thought, I see why some people have so much imposter syndrome because they see all those attacks and the fear of judgment is so real to them. It's tough. And I love how you're basically just saying, just say yes. Like most of the time you got a system. It's simple. And they say what to do. Like I was told, 
you know, when lives first came out, go do two to three lives a week. I hated doing lives. Like I, I, even after a year, I still hated it. I just did it. And even though my business was in 40 plus countries at the beginning, I was getting two or three comments because I sucked. That's why I couldn't even get courtesy comments or likes, but guess what? I found my voice from doing it. And even more so than the likes and the views that came later was I found my voice. So I just said, yes. So like looking at that, if you were to say, you know, as, as people come through and they're like, okay, what would you suggest if someone really wants to rank advance? And they say, you know what? I want to rank advance in the next, say, 30 to 60 days, right? I want to increase my leadership. I know it's not an overnight process, but I'm a, I'm a yes person. I'm going to do what you tell me to do. Your 26 years of experience, right? You've seen how people go on these blitzes and all out crazy to make it happen. What would you say if someone, let's just say 60 days, someone wants to rank advance in the next 60 days, what would your advice be to them? Well, number one, decide, decide and commit to it. You know, don't just, you know, think about it, actually decide and commit to it. And then what you want to do is work it backwards. Where, what, what's your volume need to be? What, what needs to happen for you to get there? Work backwards, right? Then look on your team. If you have a team at this point, okay. And find out who on your team, help them pop the ranks by helping them pop the ranks that automatically gets you to pop the ranks. So it's, it's, it's kind of like multi-level thinking, right? It's, it's like, you think about yourself, you're like, I got to hit this rank. I, the word I is a problem. <laughs> you know, it basically like now you go, okay, that's in your head. I had to hit this rank that's in your head, but now go, okay, who on my team needs to hit X rank for me to get to my rank. And that's all you do is, is you just focus on them. And then you might have to go below them and help their, some of their people, right? So you, you have some sort of a team blitz in a certain leg or all your different legs of your organization. And you just go like crazy. And you're doing a blitz every two hours on, on a pattern. You're, you're doing a three-day blitz or you're doing a 48-hour blitz and you're, and you're shaking it up a little bit. And really you do all of it. You know, like it's kind of like, once again, back to sports, is, you know, if, if, you know, it's football season, we're getting into, you know, a uh, bowl season soon. And then the NFL playoffs and, you know, at the end of December, beginning of January is, is offense, offense scores, touchdowns, mm. offense scores goals. And guess what? You can run it. You can pass it. You can fake it, then run it. There's all these different options. And so people ask me, Jefferson, what do you, you know, what's your main thing? Well, I've done living room presentations. I've done Zoom presentations. I've done recorded presentations. I spoke to 30,000 people in an arena presentations. I, I, I've done it all. And, and the thing is, is, is you have to get used to just doing it all. Now, here's what I mean by that. Like, like do a phone call. You got to do a phone call. Do a three-way chat. I love three-way chats, by the way, with little oh, audios yeah. and all that stuff. It's just, it's so efficient. Make sure so you master three-way better three -way than chats. the old school three-way calls. If you're still doing them, you love them, great. More power to you, but so much more effective. Go to the movies, come out two hours later. You got eight waiting for you, so you don't have to coordinate. So much better. Yeah, yeah, so much more efficient. So so, so the ways that uh, of technology these days leverage that right i mean obviously um with zoom now i'm mean, it's crazy I, I looked at the date that i started my account with zoom you know when it was it was the end of 2013 it was crazy man because i had international groups right so like i was like well, I was, yeah, mine was probably Skype before 2015 that. i think yeah, yeah. And so when I, when I first saw Zoom, I saw the Brady Bunch thing with all the freaking faces. I'm like, this is it. <laughs> this is going to be it, man, right? And so when, when the pandemic happened, I was like, sweet, yeah, I'm, I'm used to this. Let's rock and roll, right? But th the thing is, is you got to be prepared to, to do what it takes. And it starts with your commitment and your decision. Now, here's the thing. If you shoot for uh, Z rank, but you hit Y, okay. Okay. B, you know, I'm not saying be satisfied with it, but be happy that it, cause if you shot for Z, if you didn't shoot for Z, you wouldn't have gotten nothing. Right. And so I got very cynical, uh, you know, Rob, I got very cynical about goals um, a few years back. Cause I'm like, Psh, I'm not going to hit it. I'm eye rolling in the back of my head, you know, all kinds of stuff. So I actually stopped setting goals for, for a season. And it was the <laughs> miserable part of my life because I'm thinking, yeah, I'll just think about it and I'm just going to do it. All it is is a North Star for you, right? And if you're shooting Ooh, for, you know, the Mars, good. yeah, and you hit, you know, the moon, okay. You hit, you hit, the, you shoot for the stars, you hit the moon, that's okay, right? You yeah. shoot for a million, you hit 700,000, not bad, okay? It's all the things that you're having to do that makes you who you need to be to get to that goal. And so all that grit, all that stuff, all that 
weightlifting, right? The extra, what's called you stress you put on yourself. That's the good stress, right? The you stress you put on yourself, I'm telling you, that is what makes you great. And that's what's going to help make your people great by pushing for that rank. And that's all it is. It's, 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 you get there. Cool. Now you help other people get there. So back, so full circle, yeah. focus on the people in your group that need to hit what they need to hit. And then you're going to hit that rank. Old school tap rooting. I love it. I'm, yeah. I'm huge on it. I, I'm thinking of a bunch of different things. I got tons of notes right here. I like how you said North star because it's direction. And I look at it and I remember doing studies on goals and it was like 90% of disappointment comes from unrealistic expectations. But then I study all the greats and I'm like, Michael Jordan want to be the greatest of all time. Was that realistic? No. Right. Like a lot of these people that have achieved great things. So I'm like, well, like, what do you do? And that's the answer right there because the definition of happiness is progress. And so if uh-huh. you can focus on the progress, you can focus on the direction as you just said there, celebrate it. Now don't celebrate it in the way that you're done. Celebrate what you've done and then say, okay, I want a little bit more. I want a little bit more progress. And if you focus on direction and progress, celebrate along the way and keep pushing yourself for a little bit more. That helps. I think people misinterpret guilt these days. It's like, don't feel guilty. You do you. Guilt, actually, if you look it up, it's just awareness. There's Mm -hmm. nothing wrong with guilt. There's something wrong with shame. Completely different, right? But guilt is awareness. How do we know right from wrong? It helps us to be better, to do better. But when it's manipulated, it turns into shame. So I think that's so key. Well, Last question here for you. So now let's say they're outside of a blitz and we know the importance of, of staying consistent. What would you give is either, uh, I used to always say just daily method of operation. Now I've changed it to daily slash weekly because I started looking back to when I was building. Now, obviously I'm just coaching. And I was like, there were some goals where, you know, for me, like new invites, I got in a mode where I just, Monday I was on fire and I would go do them all. And so rather than doing like three a day and then you're done and check it off, like I did better with some goals that were weekly, some are daily and some, it just depends on the individual, right? So what would you give is like your, some are daily, like personal development, right? I don't want to go to three hours one day and then don't do anything for seven days, but what would you give is your DMO or, or weekly method of operation for someone to, you know, keep going, make it happen? Yeah. I mean, I think, I think that, you know, the key thing is having good stuff going in your ears all the time, you know, whether it's 10 minutes or 15 minutes or 30 minutes of personal development, you know, your favorite, uh, you know, trainer like you, right. Uh, and, or your favorite author or whatever, but, you know, obviously you want to be reading books that are, that are going to help you go in the direction that you're going. Now, I understand sometimes your brain needs a break from like business books or network marketing books or whatever. And that, and that's cool. Um, but if you're, you're moving on something and you're, and you, you want to, you're outside of the blitz and you're just doing your daily, you know, your daily thing. It's like, okay, who, you know, it's almost kind of like, you know, what would Rob do? What would Jefferson do right today? Right. And it's like, I kind of just imagine what we would be doing. And, and if we had cameras on you at 24 seven, right. What would you be doing? Like, are you going to be watching the Netflix thing? You're like, Oh, somebody's watching me. I better, I better start making some calls. Like I do men- mental gymnastics with myself still sometimes of that. Right. Because if, if, you know, the whole thing of if your group was doing what you were doing, would you have a good day kind of thing? Right. And, and so for me, yeah, I, I think the daily method of operation weekly, weekly, weekly activity is, is better to look at it that way. And for me, I mean, really the only day that I take off is Sundays, but um, I love Saturday mornings though. Saturday mornings are great for like a breakfast presentation slash a training, you know, uh, you, usually about three o'clock, four o'clock, uh, three o'clock in the afternoon, I kind of shut it down as far as the weekend. But then Sunday night, either I prepare for the week um, and or depending on if I got new teams that have been launching, I'm doing some Zooms on Sunday night because people are home, right? It's kind of like it's kind of like real estate, nights and weekends, right? I mean, it's the same hours of network marketing as, as that. And so I'm always thinking of forward progress. You know, I, I, I want to get to my uh, to my goal. So what would what would so-and-so be doing? You know, it, that's, that's what always gets me re-centered back to what I need to be doing. Um, and, and I think that, um, I would not feel good with myself. Like, you know, really it's like when I lay my head down on the pillow at night, you know, am I happy with myself on the, being honest with myself, am I happy with the activity I did today? And you're the only one that knows that. Yeah. 
right? You can, you can put, po- you can post whatever you could do this, the stories, the activities, whatever, but you know, in your heart of heart, did you do all you could do that day to, to, to move the needle? And that's really what it's, what it's about, right? Is stringing those together. Seinfeld said it best. He's like, I write jokes every day. Then I'd write, then I'd string those days in a row where they become weeks and months of writing all those jokes. And it's just one day at a time as you string it together. And that's how he's become, you know, a savant, right? Prolific, yeah. you know, in, in the comedic world. No, it's, it's amazing. And it's amazing how we always come back to those basics. And then people are always trying to find like the secret sauce strategy. And it's like, yeah, there are new things that we learn and new techniques, but the principles are the same. They're timeless. They'll never change. And we're always trying to learn how do we get back and how can we, you talked a lot about just refocus, right? And spending those Sunday nights so that you're very deliberate and intentional with your time. Well, Jefferson, I appreciate you coming on. No, so uh, last last two things. One, where's the best place for people to find you on social media? And tell us again, because I don't have your book. I got to get your book. Tell us again, the name of your book and best place to find it. Yeah. So the name of the book is Higher Life Design arrive at your intended destination, healthy, wealthy, and happy. Uh, obviously you can find it on Amazon and uh, you can find me on, uh, on Instagram at Jefferson F Santos, uh, or just connect with Jefferson.com uh, connect with Jefferson.com has all my social media handles on that, on that kind of a link tree link, uh, mini website type thing there. So yeah, that's, what's up, man. So I appreciate you having me. Uh, it's been amazing. And, uh, I'm ready to rock and roll. Here we go. 26 years experience, about 26 minutes you get. Uh, successful people compress time. You got to learn right from other people's mistakes and successes to help accelerate your game plan. But again, it doesn't work unless you work. Don't become the broken know-it-all. Don't turn personal development PD into procrastination development. Go make it happen. Go give this guy a follow. Go get his book. Thank you all for tuning in. I appreciate you, Jefferson. You're the man. Thanks for coming on. Thanks, Rob. Appreciate you, buddy.